Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to be talking about a tiny little tip uh, that I use to figure out types for the standard library. Um, I realize not everyone follows the same procedures, so I'd show you in a video. Uh, let's jump into it. Okay, let's say that I was working with some, and this is specifically for the standard library. This is going to change depending on what code you're going to look at, um, but I'm specifically talking about the Python standard library today. Um, so let's say that I was working on, well, I don't know, uh, curses, for instance. And the curses module has a whole bunch of functions. Now, uh, say I was looking for a very specific one. Um, we'll actually pick one later. I don't, I don't particularly know what one I would look for. Um, but usually what I, what I used to do is I would search Python 3, uh, curses and find... Um, well, actually, it's the second result here. I would find the module documentation with all of the functions in it. Um, but in a lot of places, like, uh, I wasn't really sure, like, you know, they list the parameters here. Um, you have to read a whole bunch of text to figure out what each of these parameters are. You might not know specifically what they are um, or what types they are or what it returns. And I often find that, you know, reading, reading this documentation can be a little bit tedious. Um, fortunately, as part of standardizing type checkers in Python, there has been a repository created called TypeShed, and it contains uh, PyI files or stub files for the standard library. So what I've more often been doing, uh, instead of just reading these documentation, is going to github.com slash python slash TypeShed. And uh, if you navigate into, and this directory structure has changed more than once, so it's possible by the time you watch this video that it's no longer the same, um, but you can click into, it'll be in here somewhere. Uh, but you can click into standard lib, and let's say we're looking at curses, uh, which will have an init.py file. This py file matches up with this particular file here. And if we wanted to find, you know, the signature for init pair, uh, it is not listed in here. Oh, right, because it comes from underscore curses. So we actually have to go to underscore curses. So sometimes things are not laid out as nicely in the PyI I files. That's actually a pretty good thing to show there, which is sometimes sometimes you have to manually follow the imports to find where the, the things are actually defined. Um, what was the function we were looking for? Uh, init pair. All right, cool. So you can see init pair here has, uh, you know, three arguments, the pair number, the foreground, and the background. Uh, we know it's not going to return any value, and each of these are integers. So you can pretty easily find the uh, the things you're looking for in here. Now, note that sometimes TypeShed will have types that are imaginary. So for instance, this curses window type, this isn't actually a real type that you'll get in uh in the curses module, this is a fake type that has been invented such that TypeShed can stub it out. So you won't you won't ever see this this type actually in code, um, but this is kind of a uh, a type for these stubs so that you can have functions on a particular return value. And it actually returns a C type behind the scenes that you know is is hidden away and you can't really instantiate it directly. But Anyway, you can access this uh, curses window there, and you can see like all of the functions on the curses window, um, which there are a lot of them. <laughs> so you can find basically all of all of the types as well as you know all of their functions. Uh, now note that sometimes type shed is a little bit out of date, so sometimes you might find a function that acts differently than the signature says it does. Uh, and fortunately, it's really easy to send a pull request to type shed. Um, I've actually done a bunch of these myself to improve. But a few stubs, so if you look here, I've made, well, not quite 29, but somewhere around, you know, 25-ish changes to improve the uh, improve the, the stubs of the standard library, which, you know, helps everyone else who's using type checkers. Uh, but anyway, that's a little procedure that I figured I'd share with you, which is how I figure out what functions in the standard lib take what types. Um, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.